The reality of thousands of migrants arriving and existing on the margins in South Africa is grim. They lack access to proper health care, shelter and safety, while also facing violence, physical and verbal abuse, police harassment and xenophobic attacks. In Musina, on the border with Zimbabwe, where MSF runs medical programs, the number of attacks, robberies, and rapes by gangs active on both sides of the border has been on the rise since the beginning of the year. In its clinic in Musina, MSF treated 103 survivors of sexual violence in the first four months of this year, 71 since March 1st alone. For those fleeing hardship back home, crossing the border, even with the proper documents, remains a dangerous struggle. It was, uh, yeah, we had three people that was beaten this morning uh, crossing the border. It was beaten here, here, you can see. And then here, a little bit, with a knife. Huh? The Guma Guma gangs caught me. They removed all my clothes and then tied me up using my shoelaces and demanded money. I gave them all the money I had with me. Then they took a stone and hit me on the head, holding the stone and kicked me in the ribs. They left me without any money. Women and children are particularly at risk. We walked from Bay Bridge to the river. When we got to the river, we crossed the river and the border. After crossing, we met Guma Guma gangs. We were four ladies and three men. The Guma Guma told the men to go and said the women should stay behind. When we were left behind, we were raped by these men. I was raped by two of them, and the other ladies were also raped by two people each. When they finished raping us, they searched us and took away some money that we had. They then told us to go. The victims, often stripped of all their goods, are desperately seeking help in an environment unfamiliar to them. Once they cross the border, they risk facing arrest or remain stranded for days or weeks in overcrowded shelters while applying for asylum. Some try to find jobs nearby or resort to other means to survive. We walked until we reached a farm. We got employment in this farm and worked for three months. On the 27th of January, we proceeded on to Johannesburg. Yet once in the safe haven these vulnerable migrants longed for, the ordeal is often far from over. Here in Johannesburg, many of them have no other option than trying to find some small bit of space in derelict buildings, with no water, sanitation or electricity, putting at risk their health and personal security. Many have also found refuge in the Central Methodist Church in the city's downtown core. It's very tough because, you know, those mothers with babies, sometimes they, they, the babies got sick. The disease, let's say this one is having running stomach, the other one next day is having another running stomach. You see those diseases, they can just, you know, circulate in the same place because there's no any fresh air. There are a lot of people who live in these uh, buildings who can hardly access, you know, primary health care services. Because basically most of them are migrants and because they may not have legal papers to, to move around, they are afraid they may be harassed by, you know, the police, they may be harassed by, you know, even some uh, hospitals or clinics may have a, a negative attitude towards them. There are harassments and you encounter them regularly. As foreigners, we are always targeted. We are mugged and our money and cell phones are stolen. Women are sometimes raped. 
In Johannesburg, Médecins Sans Frontières set up a primary health care clinic for these migrants, who are often turned away from already overburdened South African health facilities because they do not speak the language or don't have the money to pay the consultations. The main conditions that we see in the clinic and also when we do mobile activities in, in the other buildings uh, is uh, general primary health care conditions and, such, uh, and very much linked to living conditions uh, such as uh, respiratory tract infections, uh, urinary tract infections, uh, a high prevalence of TB, uh, very high prevalence as well of HIV and uh, opportunistic infections and other conditions related to HIV. In addition to their appalling living conditions, these migrants face a climate of permanent insecurity and uncertainty. While trying to settle in these derelict buildings, thousands have been evicted four times over these last nine months. Evictions are carried out by security forces, including one known as the Red Ants, who use violence and intimidation. Since we came here, it's about 1,000, 1,500 people that, uh, that have been kicked out from the streets, uh, or on the streets, uh, with all their belongings. They were not allowed to go back into the building, get any of their belongings. Uh, a lot of them are complaining that their passports or all their valuables are still in there. Everything they own is still in the building. Uh, the Red Ants are throwing things out on the street. Uh, we met just one woman who uh, lost her asthma medicine that we had given her in the clinic a few weeks ago and she was having a severe asthma attack at the moment. I've just stopped breastfeeding and so I left the baby milk inside and now she's crying, she's hungry. At the first eviction in October we lost our clothes and now I left them inside and they are lost. We just heard that the red ants had arrived. We were shocked because there was no notice of eviction. We weren't ready. We lost all the big bags with the clothes inside and groceries. What pains me most is my baby health card. They refused me to go inside and take it. Migrants coming to South Africa have often fled their country as a matter of survival. They face violent attacks during their journey and further threats living in dangerous conditions. Without access to basic medical care, safety and shelter, the survival of these vulnerable people remains precarious and uncertain.